And I'm sorry to have to rush our last two speakers, but we have so little time left. Um, Huzir Suleiman, who is a writer, director, co-founder and joint artistic director of Checkpoint Theatre Company, um, and who also heads Studio Wong Huzir and is the publisher of online magazine Postcode.sg and currently teaches at NUS. Huzir, could you quickly share with us your thoughts? Thanks. Um, I want to start by saying that I agree with what my fellow theatre practitioner, Se Chen, says. Uh, but as an insurance policy, Se Chen, I'd like to invite you to my 75th birthday party. Which, and maybe I can come to yours too, yeah? Um, I'd like to look at sustainability from a, from a personal psychological level. I had a lot of thoughts in the last two or three weeks since I was invited to speak on this panel about policies and structures. Uh, and then something happened to me a week ago. Um, a week ago, I was in Italy, uh, in Sicily, outside the town of Syracuse, and I was standing in the classical Greek theater there. Uh, open air, it's that classical semi-circular bowl cut into a hillside. Uh, 15,000 spectators with the hills behind you and a forest in front of you. And it was built in the year 500 BC, when Syracuse was the richest and most powerful state of Greece, having just defeated Athens. And the theater was one of the most important in the ancient world. And all the major Greek playwrights were performed there. And apparently, three tragedies of Aeschylus were premiered there in the presence of the playwright. Aeschylus, as you know, along with Aristophanes and Sophocles, one of the fathers of Greek tragedy, the man who introduced the second actor to Greek uh, drama and who got the chorus involved in the action of the scene. And it was really an overwhelmingly emotional moment for, for, for Claire and myself to stand in the same place as one of the birthplaces of Western theater, which is essentially the art form that we practice even in a very postmodern, postcolonial Southeast Asian variant. So I suddenly felt very rooted to the past of my discipline and the sense of what it means to write and create drama. After 2,500 years, you can still read seven of the plays that Aeschylus uh, wrote that have survived out of the 79 that he wrote, and you can stand in the spot where they were performed. And that, to me, is sustainability. And the thing is, is that the theater is still being used because every year since 1914, 99 years ago, there's been an annual summer festival of classical Greek theater performed in Italian by the leading actors in Italy. So this is living culture. And it's funded by everyone from the local authorities to the Sicilian regional government to the Italian national government right up to the European Union. So even though Yulin points out that European funding for the arts is being cut uh, because of the powerless financial state of the governments, there has historically been massive state support. And that's why, after almost 100 years, you can still see every summer massively popular contemporary performances of drama that's 2,500 years old. So I have two points to make about the sustainability of the arts, uh, and one is directed to the NAC. Um, if you want something to last 2,500 years, you've got to do as both the ancient Greek city-states and modern European governments have done. Uh, you've got to build theaters, you've got to hold arts festivals, like the Dion Dionysian festival that Aeschylus participated in. You've got to fund lavish productions. You've got to create the social and economic and political conditions necessary for the arts to take center stage in life. Um, but th this is an argument that many people make uh, with many much more articulately than I do. And I, I endorse Yulin's uh, very, very diplomatically put point, which is essentially, you should give us lots more money. <laughs> but the second point is, and here is where I'm speaking to my fellow artists, um, is where we come to the personal or psychological, about what it means to sustain an artistic practice. Going back to Aeschylus, Aeschylus was a young guy, 25. He was working in a family vineyard, and one night he had a dream in which the god Dionysus visited him and ordered him to start writing. So at the age of 26, he became a playwright. His first play was, was his first tragedy was produced. And this kind of resonates for me because the only way that the arts make sense as a life is if you as the artist see yourself as divinely inspired. I mean, you have to be on a mission from the universe or from God or whatever or else there is no point making art. Because the economics of theater making in particular make absolutely no sense. So it has to be because it is deeply necessary to you. You have to have an incredible sense of purpose, which I will freely acknowledge is very, very close to arrogance. And you have to believe 
that you are in possession of some form of truth or insight into the human condition and that you have to share it with people. Because if you look at the alternative, if you don't have that belief in yourself, you really should not make art. You should not waste your time, you should not waste your energy, and you should not waste other people's time, and you should not waste the money of taxpayers. And this is the difference, of course, between arts and entertainment. Entertainers just need to entertain. It's a modest goal. I mean, it's worthy, but it is a modest goal. But artists, on the other hand, have a very lofty ambition about reaching for the fundamental truths of life. Now, the problem is, is that you can't just, just believe in yourself. You also have to be good. Uh, because especially if you know anything about the theater scene, we all know you know, complete wankers who are convinced of their own brilliance. Um, so this is, the, this is the incredible paradox. On the one hand, you need very high self-esteem and a sense of being almost divinely ordained to sustain you through all the difficulties of making work, because it is very, very difficult. But on the other hand, you need incredible humility to keep monitoring your own progress as an artist to make sure you're not deluding yourself. And there's a real danger, especially in theater people, of beginning to believe in your own infallibility. And this is fatal because you alienate your peers and eventually you lose your audience. So I think the three components of sustainability on a personal level, you have to have insane self-confidence, you have to have deep humility, and as my colleague points out, you have to live a long time. Thank you.